Evaristo. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's an absolute uh, pleasure and honor to be to be here with you. Um, I have decided to talk about uh, plasters um, because um, I like natural building and earth, uh, of course, but uh, plasters have always had a special place in my life and uh, in my professional experience until the moment. Uh, exactly, I tried to remember a few minutes ago, but it's exactly 20 years ago, in 1898, uh, that I started, I was studying architecture in Grenoble, and to finance my studies, I started working in a, a French company, selling natural products and uh, plasters. The guy was German, and he had uh, brought from Germany German materials. And then I worked with him like three or four years uh, next to my studies. And uh, uh, this is how I got a lot of experience, manual experience as a craftswoman. I was with two or three other guys and we were plastering houses. And this is really how came my love to the material earth and uh, all of the other experiences I had later were based on this first uh, work with, with uh, earth plasters. Uh, so you can... Uh, so uh, plasters, uh, and I, the last years also learned to work with lime, and I learned to cherish this uh, very old and very traditional material that we have all over the Mediterranean, and also in uh, many other countries. Uh, which is present in the old buildings, but not so much in the new buildings. There are not so many, maybe in Italy, but uh, in the other countries, it is not. It is uh, the tendency is that it is the no knowledge for it is, is disappearing. It requires a bit more technicity and know-how. And uh, during my projects of the renovation of the houses in Bulgaria, I started first uh, very slowly just adding some lime to to the earth mortars, and then more and more to, to, to work with lime, to the point where now I think I use both materials uh, as much in the, in the projects. So, uh, but before, uh, so this is a bit the plan of my uh, talk today. I first will talk about uh, a short story of uh, Chilean architect, uh, Chilean uh, author, Francisco Coloan, because I find it very like a philosophical question, which is the prelude to all of our uh, projects and all the things we are, we are doing as uh, professionals. Uh, and then I will very shortly talk about a uh, European project, which was the prelude to this uh, ECVET um, project uh, about which Maria talked uh, yesterday. It lasted like 10 years, and it was a, a lot of information was was gathered, which then was used for the next step of the of the European project. And I was part of it in the very beginning when the project started. So as it was on plasters, it also gave me plenty of influences, connections to people all, all over Europe. Um, so then I'll present you you shortly my one of the houses in Bulgaria that I have renovated and I will talk uh, about a project in um, in another village in Bulgaria another house which we renovated last summer uh, and then very shortly I will pass through uh, the, the trainings I try to organize every every summer and on the my second book so the, my first book was uh, for earth building in general, and the second book is on earth and lime plasters. Uh, Francisco Coloan is a Chilean author uh, from Chiloé, from this island in the south of Chile. Uh, he was uh, still alive when I was in Chiloé 14 years ago. He is uh, a, a great uh, uh, author and one of his tales, he, he writes very short tales uh, with very short sentences in it, but very strong. One of his tales is about two two men who are in a farm. They their job is to lighten the farm 
during night so that uh, boats do not get lost in the sea, that they can find the way back to, back to the continent. And there is a big storm starting, and those two guys, they are completely alone in their far, and they have nothing to eat because the weather is so bad for two weeks that the provisions cannot come. All of their provisions are gone, and they are starving. Uh, they have only one uh, chicken with them. And so the whole tale is about the two guys fighting. The one wants to eat the chicken, even if it's the last thing that he does in his life. He wants to eat and die happy. The other one wants to uh, save the chicken, and he gets out of it one egg every day. And with this egg, he mixes it with some flour and makes something which allows them to survive. So the whole battle in this, uh, they're really fighting until the end. The one has to attach the other to, to a chair so he cannot move. The whole battle is about this chicken, the one wanting to save the life of the chicken because this means food for them, even, in, even if in small quantities. The other one would prefer to, once uh, in, his, in his last moments, eat to his satisfaction, and then even if this means death, this is not, uh, not so important. So I think um, it made me think uh, of our civilization. If we are not eating the chicken, and uh, if we cannot satisfy only with one egg a day, and I think the philosophy be behind our natural building is to try to be satisfied with less and then have the chicken live longer and be able to, to continue uh, like laying eggs. Um, so you can... So what is a plaster? The plaster is the, the last layer that we put on a building but it is also the first, the first layer in touch with our bodies and uh, the one that we have in sight. Uh, uh, one plaster has uh, different functions and they can be summed to three. The first is to homogenize between different materials that you can have in, a, in your building. The second one is to to hide uh, different technical uh, elements that you may have, like pipes or uh, heating or uh, electrical cables. And the third uh, reason for plastering is uh, beauty, to make your space nicer. Because a plaster can bring you color, it can bring you texture, it can bring you light, or in the opposite, make a room darker. Uh, and this, I think, plasters have been present in the human history since building exists. Even uh, probably the first building techniques were uh, wood with, uh, so wattle and daub, and what is wattle and daub? It is uh, wood with a kind of plaster to, to make the materiality of the, of the wall. So plasters are extremely old. Every civilization has it. Uh, some uh, civilizations like the Japanese, they have brought it to such a sophistication that in Japanese monasteries you can have up to 80 layers of different plasters. Uh, so, next one. The, the European project uh, Leonardo on Earth Plaster started in 2004, I think, uh, and it gathered six countries. Uh, it was a very intense period where people were traveling, gathering, and everyone bringing his own piece of knowledge uh, to the common table and saying, I have experience in this, I have experience in that. And then for, for, we traveled, we made a, a big trip from Germany to Eastern Europe to Bulgaria and then back by train. It was a ex terrible, terribly nice experience. Uh, we met many interesting people on the way, and we became friends, and then back. And at the end, we produced a CD, uh, and now technologies have changed, and everything is on the, on the net. But there, is, uh, there was a lot, a lot of, of information gathered, uh, structured, and presented in a way that other, others can, can use it. At that time, there was financement, uh, and it was translated in many languages, and the next step was uh, the broadening of the information, not only to uh, 
plasters, but to natural, other natural building techniques. First it was earthen techniques, I think, and now it is even br broader. Um, can go. So uh, actually the, the site that Maria, I think, presented, uh, there is a, a, a website with earthbuilding.eu, which is linked to a school in Germany. There is a school on uh, natural or earth building uh, in Vangelin, and there are people being trained there. But on, here you can find a map with also other countries and other centers who, ha who can provide uh, training. So this is what uh, Maria also presented yesterday. There is extremely a lot of information. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that you can just download the things. It's not so easy. Somebody to get trained, um, a big part of the training is also ha has to be done from person to person. There are so many technical things that you have to manage and to master, but still it is a, an excellent point. Uh, a huge amount of information has been gathered. Um, I want to very shortly talk about humidity in houses. We tend nowadays to build, first of all, to spend uh, uh, like 90% of our time indoor. This has never happened before in human history. We have always been more time out than in. And nowadays, we first spend a lot of time inside, and then we seal our houses. We, we protect them, we put them, because we don't know what to do with the rest of the petrol industry, what, what we invented, oh, we, we make building materials with this, to, it will bring some money. So we are putting insulation, which is uh, not letting the walls or the, the house to breathe. And as we uh, produce more than four liters uh, per person in the, in the house, this makes a huge amount of humid air which needs to go out. Um, so through uh, all, all natural, uh, all, all buildings, they breathe. They, they let this moisture go out. And new, new buildings, they don't. You have a lot of condensation, humidity, and incomfort in the houses. You can I added these slides uh, yesterday evening because I had friends from Chile and Uruguay who would start to ask, but where is Bulgaria? Is it uh, in the Balkans? So I added a few slides to shortly present. Uh, Bulgaria is a country situated north of Greece and it is structured by two mountain ranges. The, the one uh, on top is the Balkan range. We call it the old mountain, Stara Ponina in Bulgarian. And the other big mountain range is the Rodopi mountain. And a big part of the projects I will show will be situated here where the red point is. And then we have the Black Sea, uh, the Black sea Romania, the Danube, uh, Serbia, and Greece. Uh, this is the Balkan range. It is a high mountain which separates the country in two very clear geographical zones. On the north you have a Danube Valley, which is definitely colder than the south of the south of the country. And the other mountain range is uh, not so high. It is the Rodopi Mountains. Uh, Two-thirds of them are in Bulgaria and one-third is in Greece. So we share this, uh, this mountain. And this is uh, my place, my hamlet. Uh, we bought it when we were students 17 or 18 years ago. Uh, and it was a, a ruin. It was a ruin which had been abandoned 20 years in the 80s. Uh, and before that, people were uh, having ship, ships, were uh, ship, ship, um, uh, ele elevating. And... Um, you can continue. So I will shortly present some pictures which I probably showed also last uh, time, but uh, I want to present the work on the plasters we did, and last time we were not so far. So the house is from straw earth. I think this technique has a huge uh, future. Uh, I prefer it to the um, straw bales because it makes the economy of space. Straw bales, they require, uh, they are very thick. 
uh, and here you have a mixture of earth with uh, straw, and you can you can um, decide which wall um, will be more insulative and which wall will have more earth in it. So it is uh, more accumulative, more uh, um, it has more mass in it. So in this way, you can have south, uh, southern walls which need to accumulate uh, sun with more earth and northern walls which need to be more insulative you, you put more straw and you can regulate in one house the the, the walls and it is a very uh, now we are eight or nine years after the erection of the building i can testify that the climate is just amazing it is very comfortable to live in this house you can um, here we are making the extension behind the house uh, and we are preparing for the plastering. We're just protecting the, the windows. Uh, and I, add, I doubled the walls with an insulation of reed, which uh, we imported from Serbia. It, it has been produced there, close to the Danube. So how, and then different thicknesses of these uh, reeds. Uh, we use, uh, in Spain, you use it also for ceilings, but we use it a lot uh, for the walls. And we also make uh, tests of our earth. I have had the comment of local people, uh, you're absolutely crazy, they say we use the bockels for our food preserves. We have never seen people, somebody put earth in a, different samples of earth in a, in a bockel. But we, whoever comes with his earth, I try to keep the samples and then have different samples of the earth. So we, we use local earth, uh, we sieve it. Uh, I also bought one machine to crush it from the Netherlands. I bought one machine, you put the earth in and it crushes the, it crushes the, the earth to, to very fine elements. Then we store it. And uh, we make uh, mixtures out of it, and uh, we plaster with it. We plaster from inside, we plaster from outside, uh, and then we add uh, this layer of uh, uh, glass fiber to prevent cracking. And this is the house from inside. With uh, the ceiling took us a lot of effort to do, but it is the traditional way of doing. It is wooden planks, 18 centimeters wide, and then smaller elements in, in between. Um, this is the lime mortars. And the lime, uh, you can mix it either with sand, and it makes one plaster like this, which is a bit uh, gray. And uh, you can also mix it with um, marble powder which is imported from uh, an island in Greece, uh, from Tassos, and it, it, it gives a, a extremely white color uh, finished for the, um, for the plasters. This is the, the mixture with the marble powder. And extremely hard also. It resists very well to the weather conditions. Um, in Bulgaria, in this area, we also have this horizontal layer of wood which, pr which uh, prevents uh, the stone walls from, from falling apart when there is an earthquake. Uh, and the northern and western walls are often on, are always from stones because from here comes the, the wind and the rain. And the other walls, they are wattle and dob, and in our case, uh, straw earth. So this is the house from behind. Uh, like four or five years ago, we finished it from from outside. Uh, again, it is a very hot, warm, warm house. Uh, of course, we we have one stove to heat, but uh, even without this, it is uh, when we are not here. My husband, who is physicist, he put some thermometers to check what is the the lowest temperature in the house when we are not here and it was like eight degrees and the temperatures outside can fall up till minus 15 and we have never had under eight degrees in the house. Um, and the, com the feeling is warm. You, in one hour uh, fire, you feel comfortable in the house. And this is from inside. 
Um, so this is a stove, uh, Swedish stove, uh, which is from uh, cast iron, so it, it keeps the warmth very, very long time. Uh, and then maybe the second. Ah, here I, I have gathered some pictures of uh, pointing of the, some walls. So the technique is you put some uh, lime mortar around the stones, and then you brush one the next day when it starts to harden, you brush it, I've, I've seen this in France, you brush it away and it really leaves a thin, a thin uh, uh, joint around the, the stones. So here I'm, I'm on the left you see how the, the stones are freshly um, jointed and then how it looks when I have removed the, the extra material. And this is our summer kitchen. Where we, where we gather. Then another, another project. Last year, uh, a woman who had read one, one of my books, she contacted me and she insisted so much, please come to see my house, please come to see my house. I have a house her heritated from my grandparents. I want to renovate it with natural materials, uh, with earth, uh, help me. And, but she first, she first uh, come, come back. She first wanted an extension uh, of the house with a wooden terrace. So I first drew for her a wooden terrace, and then she built it. And a uh, and few months later, we started the replastering. I just because I was not present when they were building it, they have put some extra extra reinforcement here. This is absolutely not. Uh, traditional in Bulgaria, we, we have this system of uh, supporting, uh, adding extra force here to the joint. So I will remove this whenever I can. <laughs> uh, it, is, uh, it is either this or this, it's never the two together. And in our countries, this is the system used and this is more typical for like Germany or France. And here they, I think they were not sure the craftsmen, they um, put the two. <laughs> So I, I, by chance, or I don't know if it was by chance, but I met a Belgian guy living in the area there who had brilliantly renovated his own house with natural materials. And when I saw this, I said, this is the guy I want to work with him. I asked him, would you work with me for this renovation? He said, well, why not? So we gathered a team of uh, four, five, and we uh, started to renovate this house. And you can, this is the village. Uh, it is on the other side of the Balkan range. So in Northern Bulgaria, uh, houses are, we have a very strong uh, building, building regulations and you cannot build outside of the village. It's very difficult to have, it's impossible to get the permission to build outside of the village. So everything is very concentrated. Um, that's okay, that's okay. You can, and the houses was from what was from wattle and dope with a, a structure from oak, very um, thick uh, wooden elements, very strong, still in very good condition. We just removed the old plasters, uh, and then I it took me like one or two days to decide where to take the where to extract the earth. I had first planned to. Uh, m to find local earth and extract it with a machine. But when I arrived there, I checked a few places and it's, it, the earth was so sticky and so difficult, it was impossible. So there was one day of despair and then I started to think, 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 what can I do? And I, I just realized we are in an area where there are many potters. All of the, m there is a pottery school which uh, teaches traditional and modern pottery techniques. And I said, potters. And I went to one friend potter and I said, where do you get your earth from? And he said, uh, we have two places who provision us with earth, one here, one there. So I once started to, to go and, and check what, the, what do they work with, the potters. And uh, they produce a kind of a, of a soup. So they mix three earths together, they make a kind of soup and this soup they pass it through a tissue and they remove the water. And they, they obtain a, a sausage like this, in which they cut, and from this they sell and make pottery. 
And I discussed with the guy, and I said, show me your soup. What does it look like? So he gave me some of his material, and this I mixed with sand, and it made me a very nice plaster, easily. Just one to two, one this of this soup to two volumes of sand, and it made me a very good plaster. So it was solved in like two days' time. I, I found the provisioning of material, and we started plastering. Um, and the tricky part was the ceiling. The first, when I went to visit the house, we had not spoken about the ceilings, but then when I arrived, the woman, she had removed also the plaster from the ceiling, and plastering the ceiling is always uh, double the effort of plastering a wall, so it took us more time than we thought, but um, you can go. We had to first fix some uh, holes of in the wall, uh, and then for this I prepared a mixture of uh, thicker straw uh, branches with earth. You can go, this kind of mixture, and then we then we spent like two or three days to fix the electricity cables because this wor work was not done. The electricians he did not know how to do it in an earth wall. He was completely lost. Uh, so we, we fixed the electrical elements in the walls and it took us like two days, uh, five people to do, to do this properly. And after that we started, uh, after that, so this is the Belgian colleague. Uh, he's living in Bulgaria, he likes it. He has, he's becoming a farmer there, he has his own land. But he has the sensibility for plastering. He went back to uh, Belgium to get to have a training on plastering and came back. So he's really motivated. Maybe one day he would like, when he's a bit more settled, start and do only plastering work. Uh, and then this is the soup that we had. And then we mix it. And of course, uh, the very interesting part was all the neighbors coming the first day, very skeptical. Oh, could you do what? Could you at all do something in this house? And then every day coming and coming. And uh, at the end, they were happy and bringing other neighbors to see the results because the house was from a house falling apart, not looking nice. At the end, it was a completely renovated house looking very attractively. Um, you can go on. Uh, so this is the, the, is the second uh, uh, tra tra trainer I got, a Bulgarian guy who was very interested and very crafted also for plasters. Uh, and then I explained to them all of things that I knew and they were very, they very quickly took, the, took it over. They could very easily manage. Uh, so these are reeds. The woman, she imported them from Serbia too. This is, the material in itself is not so expensive. It is the transport that is really difficult because uh, Serbia is a foreign country and there is not so, it was too small amount for a big truck and too big for a camionette. So it was tricky to, to make the materials come. But she, she managed, so we, we did the work. So you can continue. This is in the kitchen, we are plastering. Oh, maybe. And this is from outside. They insulated the house from outside with uh, thicker reeds, with five, five centimeters reeds. And uh, the owner of the house, she was very um, worried. Could this be fixed to the existing structure? Until the last day, she was not believing we, we could do it. But then she was very happy with the result. They are very light, these uh, this elements. They, are very, they don't uh, put so much effort on the existing uh, wooden structure. And with five centimeters, you can add a good, quite a good insulation to, to such a house. And uh, as, as from inside, from outside, the trickiest, the trickiest thing was to hide the existing cables, which were very badly laid. And then this is the end result. We, if you can uh, observe here, this is the reed mat plastered, and here is this uh, additional uh, glass uh, fiber reinforcement, which prevents cracks. And this is another project in a village 40 kilometers away from this one. 
uh, a Japanese architect married to a Bulgarian architect. They had met in um, Moscow. They studied there. And the lady, she could not stand, uh, she did not like the life in Japan, so they decided to move to Bulgaria four or five years ago. They bought an old house. Uh, I, I made an interview with them and they gave me some pictures for my book, so I, I think that their work is extremely in interesting because it is a mixture of Japanese and Bulgarian architecture. Um, so you can, you can go ahead. Uh, Yoshi Yamazaki is the, the architect and his, wi uh, his wife, uh, his, her name is Ivan Ivanova and they work together on different projects, but this is their private house. Uh, Yoshi, when I made the interview, said he used the local earth and it was not so difficult to make the plasters. The most difficult was to find the craftsmen doing the plasters for him, but as he did not manage, he did it himself at the end. He did it with his family and he did not look for a perfect look for a plaster he, in, in Japan, they have um, a lot of respect for uh, nature and they have a complete philosophy behind letting nature be stronger than you. Uh, they have it in the Raku pottery, for example, when you express the cracks. And he said, I wanted the same thing in my house, so I did a plaster whatever, uh, with whatever material I had and the cracks did not bother me. This lets the earth be as it is, and I like it this way. So he said he did easily his plasters because he did not expect a lot from them. Uh, so this is his son working and he's um, uh, downstairs, his uh, sitting, sitting place. And he, his house, he then uh, took pictures, made a model and sent it to Japan. His house won a prestigious Japanese award there uh, last year. So they recognized his work, and, uh, and now he has other, other commissions in Bulgaria. <laughs> and this is another friend of mine. He works, he is Spanish, Xavier, Xavi, and he has his own company since at least uh, eight years in Amsterdam. And again, I asked him to, to send me some pictures for my book because I would like to give a uh, a picture of modern interiors with, in this book, not only old houses, but I want to make it attractive to people to realize that you can have a modern interior. Your house does not have to be completely out of natu natural materials. You can invest in the plaster, and, and this is a vector for development for the rest of the architecture behind. If people like and are sensitive to natural plasters, maybe they will consider when they have time and money to build their the rest of their buildings with these materials. But it is a good way to start. So Xavi was very nice to send me some of his pictures. This is him plastering. You can, we'll quickly pass through his uh, work. Um, he is very good at it. He works with uh, another, another man. And he also now started to work with lime, lime materials because they are very, very uh, close and they have the same logic behind. So here he's drying the, 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 the climate in the Netherlands is uh, not so clement, it, it not, it's raining a lot. So in order to dry the plasters, you may need to use a dryer. And very quickly then some pictures of uh, Rachovice, which is the project we started in the year two, 2000 when we bought the place. And it is very slowly evolving. Uh, you can start. I, every summer since five years, give lectures to Bulgarian, for the Bulgarian audience. And to my big pleasure, there are more and more people coming. If 10 years ago, the situation was Earth does not exist, uh, it is only for gypsies, uh, I would have a lot of um, unpleasant comments related to what I would try to promote. Now the things are changing. People start to see the old houses. Uh, some of them buy them or write me an email uh, sending me some pictures 
I have this house, is it worth buying? What do you think? And then I say, but if you want to know more, I give a training, so come. And they regularly now come. So it's families who would like to have a new house or some people who want to renovate the house. And uh, often the parents come with the kids. Uh, we have had uh, only a plasters uh, workshop also. And uh, they, um, the, the fear, the fear from Earth is starting to disappear, but it is very, very uh, slow process. Um, here we are making, we are testing the different moisture contents. Um, but at least from a topic non-existent, it, be, it now is a topic where people dare to, dare to talk about. Um, it is not yet uh, the rush, but I, I hope in a few more years we will really have nice, nice achievements. Um, yeah, a lot of women are attracted to Earth. I often had uh, uh, the inquiry of young ladies who say I'm not satisfied with my actual job, I would like to learn more about plasters, about natural materials. I don't have yet a specific program for women, maybe this can come. Uh, and here are some other materials we use. Actually, I have also worked a lot with stones. We had one wall that collapsed and we had to quickly refix it. And then we fix it with cement because I'm afraid it will fall again if I don't put. And here, um, this is a, a sink, a stone sink. It's like a piece of sculpture, but we, it's our summer kitchen, so we gather around and we cook in the summer. And this is the, where we, we cook the stove and the gas stove. And yeah, you can continue. This is how we are installing it three years ago. And then I uh, built a cellar from recuperated bricks. Uh, house being demolished, I bought the uh, cheap the bricks and then we made a, a vault. And in, in front of the vault, you can go further. This was to answer the, I, I had not planned to show you these pictures, but a lot of people ask me and your place, how is it developing? So here are some pictures of what is happening. Um, I, I have built, uh, next, the next picture. Uh, a very simple rectangular uh, shed, uh, 11 by 6 meters, where I intend to host lectures. If it ever rains or the weather is bad, we can just be under. It will not be closed, it will stay like this, but anything can happen under, under a shed. Uh, so this is it, last, uh, last uh, October. And now this summer we will put stones uh, on it and finish the landscape around and plaster and finish. So this is the second book on natural uh, plasters and paints from earth and lime. I wish it to um, be um, printed uh, next month. I'm really in the final, final corrections. Yeah. Thank you.